Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello and welcome to an Inkdependence.com brief video review and water drop test. Today we have a Franklin Kristoff ink. This is the new Sweet Maroon. It is the newest of their permanent line. Uh, and so, since it is a Franklin Kristoff ink, my standard Franklin Kristoff uh, disclaimers apply, which is this. Uh, my wife works for the company. I try not to let that color my... Uh, <laughs> color. Oh, man. Try not to let me, I'm going to leave that in. I don't care. I'm going to try not to let it color my reviews in any way. I've been reviewing Franklin Kristoff products for long, since long before uh, Audrey worked there. Uh, hopefully you uh, find this informative. Anyway, uh, this is Sweet Maroon. This is a very cool color, and uh, I got I found out about this actually right about the time it went live. I didn't have any I had no idea about this ink, uh, and so here it is. You can see a little bit of dry. It ain't gotten the threads there. That'll happen sometimes. Uh, but this is a beautiful ink. I've got it in uh, at least four pens right now. I thought I might have it in more. And maybe I do, but I only found four of them right now. So, anyway, this is a very cool color. Let me get this up here for you. Here it is. So, this is the Sweet Maroon. And you get some stuff in this ink that you don't normally see in Franklin Kristoff inks. Namely, uh, a good bit of shading. Good bit of shading in all of these uh, writing samples. And also, sheen. You don't get a whole lot of sheen out of Franklin Kristoff inks usually. I'm not sure what they did differently, and I'm honestly not sure exactly how you get sheen in inks. Uh, like, you'd have to ask a Robert Oster or somebody like that, or maybe a Franklin. But anyway, uh, this has a beautiful green sheen in there, if you put it down heavily enough. And you can see it in the writing samples, uh, at least a little bit. Certainly from this Omos ink, you definitely get some green glints off of that one. Or not ink, but this Omos pen. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about the pens I had this in. This is, uh, well, this is a Franklin Christoph 45. Uh, this is the one that's been in the least time. And I really like it in this in this pen. This is a uh, little oblique medium that I had uh, ground for me. I like an oblique ink. Uh, damn, an oblique pen. And uh, so this one is no exception. It's a great pen. And it looks great in this nib. Uh, this is the driest of these nibs. Get this a little bit closer. You can see you definitely get more of the like, you know lighter tones and that sort of thing out of it. And that's not at all uh, surprising. Put that back in this little boot. Uh, next up, well, let's do it in like ascending order. Next up is this one. This is a Levenger True Writer Select. This is also a medium nib. In fact, all of these are medium nibs, but they're all very different sorts of medium nibs. So I just went ahead and did that. Uh, this is a uh, like a sort of medium wet, uh, very reliable, very, very smooth nib. I dig this one a lot. And you get a really nice tone uh, from this ink, uh, from this nib, as you see here. Uh, you get lots of shading and that sort of thing. You get shades from like this deep, deep uh, maroon kind of out to the little bit of pink and you get to like the top of R's and things like that uh, where the ink tends to fall off uh, After that this vanishing point. This is the uh, Gilosh one that they did last year Maybe this is the current I guess this is also the current uh, limited edition and uh, Actually the only limited edition that I've bought from them only my second vanishing point and uh, This one is ground to a bit of like a I don't know italic -y stubby type of critter I don't like their stock medium all that much so uh, this one works a lot better now, but as a result, I had it tuned a lot wetter, so it's going to be wetter than your average vanishing point, and so you get to see it gets uh, darker as you go up. And then at the top, there's this beautiful beast. This is the uh, Omos Arte Italiana in liquid green. This is the Milord style. Uh, it's beautiful. It's got this ruthenium trim, but it's also got a mega wet nib. This is marked as a medium, but it would be a broad or maybe a double broad if you compared it to other... Uh, nibs of this kind because it's a little bit bendy you can see a little bit here uh, and <laughs> left quite a bit of ink right there and it's also very wet so uh, this is a pen in which you would uh, only really use on good paper because other papers inferior papers fall before it unfortunately uh, but that means that you get crazy amounts of uh, sheen and such and get it to, to move a little bit yeah it's hard to see the sheen on there easy to see it here kind of hard to see it on the uh, on the paper maybe it'll show up better on video than it does on my uh, little preview screen here but anyway uh, so where it looks big and dark and bold that was done with the Omos and then here I have writing samples of all four please go over to my blog at inkdependence.com to see more of these like static image sort of things and uh, you'll find those there with like close-ups and all that jazz as far as things we can compare it to I had several like 
I don't know, reds and red adjacents sitting around, so I used those. Uh, Sweet Maroon is up here at the top. Ink 17, this is the Franklin Kristoff ink that they took to Philly. Uh, that's all sold out, I think. You might be able to get a hold of it on the secondary market, but pretty much all gone. Actually, there's a little bit of sheen on my thumbnail. Look at that guy. A little bit of sheen, that little dot. It's already dried. This ink has a, uh, a pretty solid dry time. I was uh, surprised how quickly it dried, even with the Omos dropping all kinds of ink. Uh, anyway, uh, Montegrappa Red, which I've only just gotten a hold of. It's very kind of pinky red, it turns out. Sailor Aurori, which is a tomatoey red. Schaefer Script Red, which is a red red. And at the bottom, this is Robert Oster's Hippo Purple, which is coming soon. Um, comes in bottles like this. I'll have a review for that up pretty soon. Anyway, so uh, this one is not really like any of the other maroons I have. And it's... The thing I like about this sweet maroon is that it's got this kind of like pinky texture to it, which is very cool, uh, and I dig it. All right, let's back up just a little bit. All right, let's try a water test right quick. I have my water testing gear here. Give it a nice sploosh. Get some of those letters as well. Why not highlight them just a little bit? It's actually doing uh, better than I thought it would. It's notoriously hard to get a red to be water resistant so I was not expecting a whole lot out of this I oh, look I'm taking a picture right now anyway now oh, there you go so uh, let's go ahead and mop it up it is smearing out pretty good here in the letters so I do it without pushing it too far into the rest of the text up here okay all right interesting so when you mop it up and get all the water yeah I guess so all right, cool. You get a lot of red and pink up here. What's really fun is how this is like a fluorescent pink that's left over. You can totally read it. It's definitely legible. The lines are there. The dots are there. Water test is there. Uh, is it uh, water resistant? I mean, part of it is. This pinky bit down at the bottom looks like it's kind of water resistant. A lot of the maroon comes off, and it won't look maroon if you get any water on this guy. But the rest of it seems to do okay, so that's cool. Kind of surprising. All right, let's get this out of the way, and let's take a look at... Uh, the chromatography. There it is. And after it was finished, you end up with this interesting little thing going on here. So you get this like lavendery pink down at the very bottom, and that's actually kind of what was left over here, which is cool. Uh, and then at the top, you actually have like these interesting other tones that I wasn't expecting to see. If I can get it to, there we go. You see all those like light blues and things up at the top. That's really interesting. It makes me wonder what goes into this ink as far as like pigments and stuff, because it's really cool. Uh, so this is one I like not just on the page, but also on the chromatography. So this one is a, just a winning on all counts for me. I'm just a big fan of this one. Let's look at it on some different uh, papers. Here is the swatch card I did on the um, coloring book cards from a well-appointed desk. Go over to well-appointed desk to find these guys. Uh, works perfectly for these kind of ink swatches. You definitely get some of that iridescent green there as the uh, as the sheen. The rest of it, you get definitely all that kind of shading down to like super dark bits here that are almost but not quite browny black. And then up here to like pink shades. Uh, but it's not overwhelmingly pink. It's not like a weird looking color. I think it just, I think it just behaves really well. Uh, let's see it on some other papers. Here we have it on Tomoe River. There it is. There's a couple of them. This is the first one I had it in, which is this Franklin Kristoff. Uh, it comes out very well on Tomoe River, of course. Here it is in the Omos. You still get these really dark bits. And there in the A, you see you do get that sheen. I'm also kind of proud of that A. That's a good looking A. Uh, anyway, you get a little bit of sheen in there. And also down here in the 2017 and the 3s, get that green sheen. So if you put enough down, you will see that kind of uh, uh, cool color. Here it is again, right there. That's in the 45. And then, let me block this one out. You can't see this one yet. Uh, I can't get it on the page. There we go. It'll just be upside down or sideways. There it is from the True Writer Select Medium. And you get much more, far more medium tones there. Uh, just because it's got a, a very like dead even sort of flow on that guy. All right, here it is in a currently inked. I believe this is, uh, believe this is currently called uh, Inky Fingers now. This is from... Uh, pen habit. This is wheat streak straw paper. There it is. There's a sweet maroon. From a couple of pens, anyway. Oh, the other one's up at the top. Good. You'll see more of this stuff in up close and uh, static images and that sort of thing on my blog, inkdependence.com. All right. Um, and then lastly, 
Let's take a look at it on the copy paper, where it performed very, very well. Much better, than actually, than I thought it was going to. I have it here in all four of those pens. This is a very long sort of block of writing samples. But the only place you're going to see any uh, feathering and spreading is down here. I was writing with that Omos. And it is, uh, it is feathering a bit there. And also, it did some bleeding for me with the Omos. But look at that. Not much. Like, you get some here. You get a little bit here and here. But... Not really anything else, and that's a very, that's a crazy wet nib. Up here, uh, really nothing. A little bit of spots here with, um, what was that one? That was the, oh, that was the Vanishing Point, which is the second wettest of those two. So, uh, in the drier nibs, just slightly drier, nothing at all coming through this cheesy 20-pound uh, copy paper, except for a few dots here and there, and you kind of expect that with this, because... As you can see, probably with the light behind it, this is a very uneven sort of paper. Uh, the you know the fibers and stuff in there are pretty uneven. So this is really good performance, and I like that a lot. Let's do a little quick writing sample, just because I happen to have it here. Let's go ahead and do it with this Omos, because hey, why not? All right, this is the. Come on, go back into focus. There we go. This is Franklin Christophs. Sweet maroon. It's a little bit jaggedy. Full disclosure, I was riding off to the side so I could get around my tripod. This is not the ideal setup for these, but nonetheless, there you go. And you see definitely a lot of feathering and that sort of thing from this nib, but again, that's expected. The other nibs. You don't really see that, so let's do a little quick writing example with this one too, since this video is not too long. This is the uh, Model 45. Uh, no problems there at all. And dry already on the 20 pounds. So this is an ink that I would definitely recommend to pretty much anybody. Uh, I have had no problems with it at all, and uh, I really like the way it looks. I'm not usually, uh, I'm not really into writing with pink most of the time. Uh, it's just not a color that really appeals to me. Uh, it's not some macho nonsense, but uh, it's uh, this is a great one. This like this maroon is very cool. It's a complicated ink. It looks neat, uh, and you can get it at uh, FranklinChristoph.com for twelve fifty in this. Uh, what is this bottle? This is uh, what fifty mils, I think. Uh, yeah. 59 mils. All right, so two ounces. And you can get this in their, um, their eyedropper bottles and in these glass bottles. Tink, tink. Uh, anyway, so this is a very good, uh, very, very good ink. I love it. Uh, check it out at Franklin Christoph. Try it out at a show. Uh, I'll be at the Atlanta show, which is the next one that's coming up. I probably, I will not be at Chicago uh, unless, I will not be at Chicago. That's the right at the end of finals or beginning of finals. No way. But uh, I will be at Atlanta in August. So check me out there. Find me online everywhere else at um, inkdependence.com for the static, like, picture-y blog. Uh, find me as at inkdependence on Instagram. Uh, you've got this YouTube channel thing going. Follow me in all the places. Uh, click those like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And hey, check out this stuff over here at the end. You can find uh, places to subscribe to me on Patreon and like Lindier supports the blog. You can subscribe by clicking that uh, subscribe button. And there's a couple more videos there. Enjoy those. I will see you later. Peace out.